Welcome to The Digital Couch, a podcast about the ever-changing world of digital. The Digital Couch is brought to you by Value First. The podcast features leading global thinkers and their stories from the world of business, management, and marketing. Now here's your host, Shauri Gupta. Hello everyone, today we have with us Abhiji Chakrabarti. Abhijit is Vice President of Strategy at BrainPan. Previously, he held roles at organizations such as Hewlett Packard, Panorica India and OYO. Abhijit, why don't you say hi to our listeners and tell us a quick one about your role in BrainPan. Hey guys, I hope you are doing very well and you are keeping safe. Uh, so, I am currently part of BrainPan. BrainPan is a Gurgaon based marketing and advertising company. And I've just recently joined them as VP of strategy. And in my role, I take care of the entire digital, creative, and content strategy. Yeah. All right, then. Let's get into it. Shall we start with the most typical question of 2020 that we're all talking about? How are you dealing with the pandemic out there? Personally, professionally? Well, uh, the pandemic has been the most unfortunate thing that we've ever seen, right? I mean, we have never seen devastation of this nature uh, ever. Uh, it's, it's extremely uh, sad the way things have turned out to be. A lot of people have lost their lives. A lot of people have lost their uh, livelihoods. Uh, but yes, there is a silver lining to this as well. Uh, like, I have been able to spend more time at home uh, doing things that I love. Uh, I've been able to spend more time with my family. I've picked up certain skills that I've really enjoyed doing them. I, I've picked up a bunch of recipes, so I've become a better cook. I've been writing a lot more. I've been learning a lot lot of new things. So I think while things are depressing, but the silver lining is something that I'm like really happy about. All right. And on the professional side? Well, professional side, uh, I just made a job switch. So the good thing was that my previous organization as well as my new organization, they were able to complete the exit and the onboarding formalities online, which is great. Uh, the work that I'm currently doing is really exciting. And work from home, honestly, is something that is very nice to do. I mean, when you don't have to commute two to four hours a day, you don't have to walk in the heat, in the cold, in the rain, in the sun. Uh, you you can avoid any exposure to the pollution. I think you even start looking better that way. So when I do a phone call or a video call with my colleagues and all, you know, they remark sometimes, you look fresher, you know, than you do. So I think, yeah, so some positives out of it, professional, uh, professionally as well as personally. All right. And the note that things get better overall as well. What do you feel is in store for marketers for the days to come? I think marketers have an extremely challenging time ahead. Uh, the pandemic has resulted in budgets getting slashed quite a bit. And a lot of uh, companies are now having to take a call as to which part of uh, marketing to focus on more. Do you continue to build your brand? Do you continue to advertise big ticket on television? Uh, or do you go more towards the performance marketing side? You keep pushing for transactions and getting more customers. So this is not an easy problem to solve. Uh, definitely a challenging time. Uh, but I do feel that uh, this is going to tide over. Already, I have seen a lot of uh, good campaigns happening all across, even during the pandemic. Uh, marketing teams have been forced to probably become more creative. Uh, the communication they are now sending out is more contextual. They are more empathetic more caring towards people, and a certain pushy element, I don't see it now. So that could be deliberate, or maybe it just happened by chance. But I get a feel that we are seeing a slightly more responsible side of marketing now. And I think these are good signs for the times to come. The pandemic could take many more months to fully kind of tide over, and this could remain a challenging time for uh, many more months after that. But I think the early signs that I am seeing of the way communications across organizations are shaping up, uh, the way the teams have been coping. Uh, I, I think these are good things that marketers have been able to do. Right. 
No, that's fair. But do you, do you think uh, do you think that things take a change when you speak about say business to business versus a business to consumer sort of a marketer? Yes, indeed. Look, so for a B two C marketer, the 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 biggest uh, chunk of their time essentially goes out in uh, creating communication, creating advertising. There are other aspects as well, but this is something which really, really uh, becomes what marketing campaigns get known for, right? Uh, on the other hand, B two B marketing there is a very uh, important element of actually connecting on a one to one basis many times with the prospects, right? And traditionally, that happened over meetings, uh, sometimes over calls also. But that is something which is not happening now, and more and more of these meetings are now shifting online. So purely, if you talk about work behavior, that, that is something that is changing. But if you talk about how both kinds of marketers, the B two B marketer and the B two C marketer, how they will cope to the changing environment, I think any B two B organization that is going to enable another organization to become more digital, an organization that will allow transactions to happen digitally or the staff to work better from home, I think those B two B organizations will definitely prosper. Also, a lot more focus will now come on optimizing certain certain areas, right? and any b to b organization that makes tools or systems uh, that enable that to happen that you will continue to do that so anything that increases your productivity anything that increases your profitability and generally these things happen via a b to b marketing company right these will i believe continue to do well b to c marketing is more industry specific certain industries will see good times certain industries are suffering and they will continue to suffer for some time to come as certain industries will quickly be able to transition from one from one kind of company to another and because of that the any positive or negative impact will be very very muted so i think industry wise yes the b2c marketers will also have to change and adapt and they're only doing that but i think b2b marketers if you are able to drive home the point about more profitability and better productivity i think uh, they, they should see better days all right i'm taking notes on the side as you as you say that uh how would how would the impact be i mean in terms of different sectors right i mean you briefly mentioned that some sectors will do well some sectors might not be able to do very well do you want to speak about that sure so uh, the sectors that come to mind when you talk about uh, sectors not doing well i think definitely uh, sectors that provide any kind of offline entertainment so be it movie theaters be it amusement parks you know all of those sectors have been the worst hit to be honest also travel and hospitality so uh, airlines hotels uh, bus booking companies all of these sectors are seeing the worst phase that they have ever seen i mean we we personally i mean we are too young but even if you go back to the 1930s probably that recession was something which was so bad uh, but we have seen 2008 and i have seen 2008 very 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 up close i was already an employee in an organization by the time the recession hit in 2008 it wasn't so bad in 2008 but now uh, what we are seeing is extremely different and the impact has been so so steep on these industries that Uh, you know it continues to be really really scary now the thing is that a lot of these industries are banking on the market the, the, the things opening up once again lockdown formally is over and slowly things are coming back to normal so retail for example malls are now opening up once again and maybe there's a hope that uh, things will soon go back to normal but the early trends have been that while shops have reopened people are not really going to those shops that much and if that remains the remains the case for the next few weeks then you know the, the troubling times could just extend so i believe uh, these sectors really really need to uh, you know kind of uh, somehow bear out the storm uh, maybe there is light at the end of the tunnel but right now we don't know by when that light will show itself so yeah so that is one side of things that continues to be a little problematic and that's very unfortunate but on the other hand if you talk about companies that are enabling things to happen while you're sitting at home like i mentioned even for a b to b kind of a business plan right uh, in in this particular context if you talk about technology industry if you let's say take an example of zoom zoom's valuation shot up ever since the pandemic became a global scare uh, and 
even back home in india if you really see uh, companies that are selling laptops companies that sell printers companies that sell smartphones they are either not impacted much or they have been impacted positively because the more you work from home the more you study from home and the more you communicate from home you need all these digital technologies to come to the fore right i mean yes zoom is great but you ultimately need a phone or a computer to do zoom on right and these particular uh, set of organizations and brands will continue to do well uh now if you talk about companies that could be hit could not be hit if you talk about fmcg companies i think fmcg companies uh, largely sell essential products so i think they will manage pretty well already there was a shift where a lot of fmcg products were starting to sell online and what the pandemic has done is it has just accelerated the movement of consumers from offline buying of fmcg to online buying of fmcg i don't have the numbers with me but i'm sure uh, pretty soon some major e-commerce company like amazon or flipkart will come up with some data and that data should indicate that there has been a paradigm shift when it comes to buying low ticket items fmcg products so it could be toothpaste or soap all of these products are being bought in larger numbers online and i think that shift is definitely going to help fmcg companies in particular so abhi i also want to speak about your personal journey i mean you've spent you know years in very different sectors from hospitality to liquor to technology and now you're working at brain pan looking at marketing and advertising tell us about your learnings in these different sectors and how the journey has been overall uh, so look my journey has been quite interesting uh, to be honest uh the first half of my career and i have 13 years of experience but the first half the first 7 years of my career i was not in marketing i was part of a completely different industry that is in no way connected with marketing of any sort but then i was able to make a transition in my late 20s uh and i joined uh, oyo which was a fledgling startup at that time and that organization gave me the gave me the learning and gave me the opportunity to really do well in social media uh so today if i am a full on digital marketer social media has played a major role in it because a lot of digital marketing is actually social as well right and oyo was that one organization that gave me that opportunity uh but after oyo i moved on to pernorica and pernorica is the world's second largest liquor company and there i got exposed to the enchanting world of brands uh i worked on the digital marketing side of a lot of prominent brands such as royal stag blender spray shivers regal absolute vodka and there were many more and working on these brands really opens this open your eyes up when when you're handling social media for a startup it's a very different environment but when you really start looking at things from a brand's lens uh, that's the kind of learning i got at pernodica and that really made me a more complete marketer than i would have been without this experience now after that i moved to hp hp had always been a brand i had really aspired uh, to to be a part of uh, whether you talk about buying a laptop hp is a great brand right but even in terms of joining that organization it has a certain halo to it right and when you when you join a company like hp you know hp comes with this is de- decades of uh, you know this legendary Uh, status almost right i mean before apple there was only hp right so important technological innovations were driven by hp over the years and even today hp is at the forefront of some of the technically most advanced and sophisticated products that there are if you look at the laptops super thin and light uh, if you look at the 3d printing uh, kind of industry that has uh, blossomed and hp has been at the forefront of it i mean it's always been a brand that i uh, i would say i've been really lucky to be a part of so my experience across hospitality liquor and technology and more specifically experience across an indian startup a french mnc and an american mnc it exposed me to various kinds of work ethics and cultures exposed me to obviously different industries and connected me with some of the best leaders you could find uh, any company i talk about i met great people and learned so much from them so all of this together shaped me into what i am today and i am extremely thankful for the opportunity i got 
All right, amazing. That's that's actually quite a journey with a lot of very cool names and places to be here. Uh, I also want to touch base on marketing as a function. I mean, it's a function that's seen a revolution in itself from being a sales support role once upon a time to today's day and age when it's more about brand building. It's become a very important and a vital part of any organization, big or small. What are your views on this? So in the very early days, the concept of a marketing funnel was very, very different. And we also used to talk about a sales funnel, right? Uh, in the very early days, you had no option but to be a sales support. But then advertising became quite big, right? I mean, we have all seen the show Mad Men. We broadly know. Uh, how ad agencies used to function in the 60s and the 70s. Uh, now, that and the way organizations have evolved from offline to online, with the advent of technology, digital marketing becoming a reality, and doing very well. I mean, the, the spends on digital are increasing if you compare it to offline spends. Uh, TV is probably not as important today as it used to be 20 years back, right? Uh, what all of this has done is uh, it has really expanded and broadened marketing store. And today, a marketer is not just responsible to run an ad or draft the communication for the brand, but it's also responsible for truly completing the entire customer journey, the entire funnel, whether you talk about pulling people onto top of the funnel, pushing them down to the middle, and then sending them to the bottom of the funnel and enabling transactions and even repeat transactions. Today, we can do that, right? With subscription models and with retargeting, we are able to extend the journey even beyond the bottom of the funnel. And, mm. and because of that, marketing's role has become extremely important and extremely large in the scheme of things. So uh, I, I think my, my view is simply this, that marketing has continued to evolve. It has become more and more important as times have gone by. Uh, brand building uh, continues to remain the pillar on which any organization functions. I don't think any one of us will transact and buy a product if there is no brand name behind it. We all look for that label and we all look for that emotional uh, you know, comfort that a good brand name gives us. And that's why whether you talk about uh, brand building or you talk about even conversions via digital marketing transactions, uh, marketing has really taken up the entire funnel end to end and even gone beyond that as I explained. And this this just this is just going to become more and more robust as we go forward with analytics and all kind of marketing technology tools coming. Yeah, very very well put. Uh, but building on from that, I mean, there's this debate that's always been there, right, about offline versus online marketing. And personally, I'm of the school that I feel that most sectors, when it comes to marketing, they become more transactional and marketers are just looking for clicks at the end of the day i mean what, whatever happened to the days when marketing was about inspiring people about telling beautiful stories what's what's your take on that so when i was a kid i remember uh, shows like mahabharat Ramayan, and i was an infant property at that time so i have a very faint memory but i remember during those shows there used to be ads and those ads used to be of brands like board spot or brands like uh, Maggie Hot and Sweet Tomato Chili Sauce. I remember these names now. Obviously, Gold Spot continued to exist even a decade after that. But, but the reason I remember the advertising so prominently is exactly because of what you're saying. The idea was to tell beautiful stories and inspire people. But in those days, this is broadly the only thing that marketeers could do, right? I mean, you did not have digital marketing and there was no way to measure every click. And hence, people could only communicate their ideas and tell their brand story. And because of that, all the focus and inputs and budgets went into that effort. Today, a marketer's uh, priorities are probably a little split. The budgets haven't really ballooned, right? And so, with a limited budget, a person has to juggle between different mediums, different layers of the funnel, and look at 50 other things that they did not have to look at 20 years back. Storytelling is still an important part of the entire marketing. So marketing still continues to be about telling stories. I mean, uh, look at the chocolate brands that advertise. I mean, some of the best stories are told by them. Uh, obviously, it's a particular TG that they're catering to. So not all of us may, may find those ads that good. 
but i really feel that uh, some of the recent ads i have seen have been great uh, a lot of the automobile brands you know ng uh, kia they have come up with some very very nice advertising recently uh the kind of storytelling that used to happen 20 years ago is also probably not possible that entire era had an aura around it there was certain kind of innocence and india was still kind of unshackling from a certain mindset now india has unshackled in the last decade or so and we no longer believe in certain things and behave in a certain way uh the late 90s even the early 90s that used to be a very different period i mean some people refer to these older decades as the golden period of advertising and there's a reason for that if you go to youtube you will see a lot of nostalgic advertisements that era will not come back a lot of things have changed about us as people about us as a country the economy opened up in the 90s and more and more multinational companies came up competition increased the way you could advertise increased and because of that those days are not coming back but yes i do believe that we are still telling nice stories maybe the frequency and the prevalence of that has come down a bit but storytelling continues to remain an important part of what marketing does all right in fact while we're on the topic of storytelling i thought it'd be a nice idea to also talk about the venture that you've been running it's called the anonymous writer right yeah so the anonymous writer was actually started in 2012 and it's a storytelling platform where uh, we invite uh, readers and writers to participate uh, so far close to 2 lakh uh, people have submitted their work uh, through our uh, website through our social media pages through email through whatsapp and close to 4 to 5000 stories have already been published on the platform in the last 8 years uh, what the platform does is it gives a certain reach and a scale to people today if you are a writer you don't really have a platform so you may write something but you can't get it published in a book it's very painful or expensive or both if you want to post it on your instagram page or your facebook page maybe 5 to 10 people will actually engage with it you will end up sending messages to all of your friends begging them to interact with what you have written and they may do it because they like you because they because they are your friends and family but that doesn't really satisfy the soul of a writer creative people need that level of appreciation now what the anonymous writer does is uh, with a million plus followers across various social media platforms and we are coming up with a website and an application once again uh, what it does is it really gives a large scale to people. i mean one of the most popular and viral stories ever written on the anonymous writer was actually by a pakistani girl and she got close to 50 million reach through the platform now oh. a pakistani girl writing a story on an indian platform getting 50 million worth of reach uh, that's huge right and True. she would never have done she would have never received that kind of reach had she just written something in her diary or maybe written a blog also the other thing was that around 5 to 6 years ago blogs still used to be very very important and were driving substantial traffic through social as well as search but today social media doesn't really send that much traffic to websites so engaging within the social media ecosystem is always going to be uh, more important and that's why we have really retained a presence within social media and while we are coming up with a website and a blog uh, social media is something that continues to be powerful another thing i would like to add is that we have a uh, content in three languages currently english hindi and urdu and the hindi content is managed by people in india uh, the english content is pretty much global so there are people in india in pakistan in usa in the middle east in uk in australia who write things contribute there's even someone in japan and the urdu content the urdu entire platform of urdu is managed by pakistan so i I'm, i'm in a way quite happy quite proud of the fact that you know indian and pakistanis may not come together they may be bond them but at least on our platform they are a team also uh, abhijit i also want to go back to marketing to touch a couple of more questions back uh i mean we see technology entering our function as marketers a lot the last few years how do you see it solving for the biggest pain points of a customer of 2020 well uh 
I think technology has really improved by leaps and bounds in the last few years. I'll give an example of a very, very uh, common customer pain point that used to be a big problem not so long ago. And that was if you are a customer looking for a certain product, let's say you want to buy the latest smartwatch and you are not used to buying things online, what would you do? You buy it offline. But generally, your research would happen online. So people would look for details about that particular smartwatch. Certain companies will push them to transact online, but they don't want to do that. What do they do next? They have all this information about that smartwatch in their heads, but they ultimately have to go to an online store or to an offline store because they are not happy online, right? Now, yeah. today, we have advertising that directs you to that particular store. So you can click on a search ad and your Google map will open up and you can see directions to that particular store's location. And you can track it back because at the store's location, the company running these ads would have some trackers in place. Now these trackers could be geolocation or any other kind of trackers. But the company is able to kind of map out the entire journey to the consumer. The search he made, the result that showed up, what he clicked on, the map opened up, he went to the destination, and at the destination he made a transaction. And if he made a transaction, his location in physically inside the shop can be checked via the trackers that have been implemented. Uh, how does it help the customer? The customer doesn't have to ask five different people about the location of a particular store, doesn't have to talk to his colleagues or friends, doesn't have to waste time. You like something, you look for it online, you get the details about it, you want to buy it offline, you immediately go to Google Maps and done. It's a seamless journey now. Now, this still has pitfalls. It's not absolutely seamless. There are lots of problems when it comes to tracking uh, these kind of activities from a marketing point of view. But Ultimately, the point is the customer's work is getting easier now. The customer doesn't have to work at and why should he? Just because a customer doesn't want to buy something online, just because a customer really wants to touch and feel what he wants to buy, it doesn't mean we give him an inferior experience, right? So to really give the customer the seamless experience is what technology set out to do. And I think that's solving it beautifully. I'm with you on this. In fact, it's been said that you know how the fourth industrial revolution is here now with the rise of artificial intelligence and how they're how it is shaping our experiences online and marketing automation and chatbots have taken the entire ecosystem by a storm making technology more conversational as well do you have any thoughts on this i think uh, the whole artificial intelligence uh, you know, technology and all the things that is capable of doing i think we have not even seen the tip of the iceberg uh, i mean all of us most of us are active on linkedin right and we know for sure that conversating with people via LinkedIn messages today is easier because LinkedIn gives you those recommendations. So if someone sends a hi to you, you can just click on a button and the message goes back to them. Hi, how are you doing? And that simplicity has made conversations on LinkedIn very, very easy. Now, obviously, LinkedIn is a social media platform. It's meant to be conversational. But now we are seeing applications of this technology in other areas as well. So Facebook already has quite elaborate chatbots. A lot of companies use them. And, and the same is true for a lot of the platforms. Uh, my, my thing is, right now we are just seeing the tip of the iceberg. It's at an extremely nascent stage. While as a technology, it has really grown by leaps and bounds. Applications of, and applications of this in business and marketing, we have seen nothing yet. I think in the next five to 10 years, we'll really see what technology is capable of doing. Whether you talk about AI or you talk about marketing automation, it's really going to pick up now. And maybe the pandemic has been the right kind of push because now more and more things will end up happening online. So all of these technologies become even more important. Got it. Got what he's saying. All right. So that's I'm I'm done with the set of questions that I thought I'm gonna discuss with you. It's it's actually been a great discussion. In fact, as marketers, you don't get to sit and speak on topics such as these. So thank you so much for this opportunity and thank you for joining us on this episode. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed uh, the questions and answers. I think it also made me look back on certain things. And I think I am richer with this conversation. Thanks for joining us this time on The Digital Couch. Make sure to visit our website vfirst.com where you can subscribe to the show on the platform of your choice. 
While you're at it, if you found value in this show, do write to us at thedigitalcouch at vfirst.com. Be sure to tune in to our next episode. See you.